we seem to be lost in a dream. The story of Chutala and Sikhadraja has taken on a very dreamlike quality. And what's prominent in this dream is a sexual aspect, a sexual aspect that needs to be expressed. And dreams can be like that. There can be a powerful erotic component to them. It's very much part of the dream landscape. So we have the story of Queen Chudala and her husband Sikhadvaja. Queen Chudala realized self-knowledge through self-inquiry. She's liberated. Her husband couldn't accept this and went to become an ascetic yogi living in the forest for many years pursuing his yogic practices. Eventually Chudala disguises herself as a priest, a Brahman priest called Kumba and she goes to the forest to instruct her husband and he realizes the nature of the self. He gets over his ascetic notions and realizes the true nature of renunciation. And they spend time in the forest together, Kumba and Sikhadvaja. And then Kumba, or Queen Chudala, who disappears now and again to take care of her duties in the palace, she feels the need for some kind of conjugal relationship with Sikhadvaja. And so she concocts a story of how a sage cursed her and how Kumba becomes a woman at night. So Kumba and Shikadvaja spend the days together as men and at night time Kumba turns into a woman and they sleep in the same bed together at night. So let's see what happens next. The sister continued, after a few days of such companionship, Kumba, Chudala in disguise, said to Shikadvaja, O king, listen to my submission. For some time now I have been a woman by night. I wish to fulfill the role of a woman at night. I feel that I should live as the wife of a worthy husband. In the three worlds there is none who is as dear to me as you are. Hence I wish to marry you and enjoy conjugal pleasures with you. This is natural, pleasant and possible. What fault is there in it? We have given up both desire and rejection and we have total equal vision. Hence, let us do what is natural, without desire and aversion. Sikhadvaja replied, O friend, I do not see either good or evil in doing this. Therefore, O wise one, do what you wish to do. Because the mind rests in perfect equilibrium, I see only the self everywhere. Hence, do what you wish to do. Sikhadvaja seems to be forgetting that he's married already. And you'd think that Chudala would be a little bit concerned that he's forgotten his first wife so readily. Kumba replied, if that is how you feel, O king, then today itself is the most auspicious day. The celestial bodies shall witness our wedding. Both of them gathered all the articles necessary for the wedding rite. They bathed each other with holy water in preparation for the sacred rite. They offered worship to the ancestors and gods. By this time, the night time had arrived. Kumba became transformed into a lovely woman. He, in apostrophes, said to the king, O oh dear friend, now I am a woman. My name is Madanika. I salute you. I am your wife. Sikhidvaja then adorned Madanika with garlands, flowers and jewels. Admiring her beauty, the king said, O Madanika, you are radiant like Goddess Lakshmi. May we be blessed to live together like the sun and the shadow, Lakshmi and Narayana, Shiva and Parvati. May we be blessed with all auspiciousness. The sun and its shadow, eh? The couple themselves tended the sacred fire and performed the nuptial rite in strict accord with the injunctions of the scriptures. The altar had been decorated with flowery creepers and with precious and semi-precious stones. Its four corners were decorated with coconuts and there were also pots full of holy water of the Ganga. 
In the centre was the sacred fire. They went round this fire and offered the prescribed oblations into it with the appropriate sacred hymns. Even while doing so, the king frequently held Madanika's hand, thus revealing his fondness for her and his joy on that occasion. They then circumambulated the sacred fire thrice, performing what is known as the Laja Homa. Then they retired to the nuptial chamber, a cave specially prepared for the occasion. The moon was showering cool rays after the heat of the day, and it gets very, very hot in India. The evening must be deliciously cool, and that's associated with the, the moonlight. The nuptial bed was made of fragrant flowers. They ascended this bed and consummated their wedding. So, these two liberated beings have made a nice ceremony for themselves and are enjoying sexual congress.